Tonight, new video just into out front of the moment a Ukrainian soldier shoots a Russian jet out of the sky. You can see the soldier inside what appears to be a home holding a shoulder-fired surface-to-air missile launcher. He fires twice. And then you'll see how much, obviously, that missile launcher recoils, right? You see that entire recoil turning away. And then uh, you'll see the jet's wreckage still burning. And you can appear, uh, see what appears to be a white parachute. We don't know, obviously, what happened uh, to that pilot. We do have new video of what appears to be a Russian hideout, though, that was destroyed. And uh, there you'll see Russian fighters basically moving in between homes. And then, uh, you know, the Ukrainians, uh, they film this, right? The drones see it. Once spotted, uh, there's a strike. And you'll see that massive fireball right in that neighborhood right there, as you see. And Russia's losses that they are sustaining in this way in place after place along the front line is partly why Russia is now just you're seeing a big ramp up in recruitment efforts. We're hearing it anecdotally from uh, on the ground. And now we have new video of young children uh, being taught to prepare to fight. This is video that we've obtained in Crimea. These are children in kindergarten through eighth grade. They are in annexed Crimea learning how to assemble rifles and that girl is pretty fast. They're learning tactical and physical training, uh, we are told, along with radiation, chemical, and biological training. These types of classes are also taking place inside Russia. Wagner has its own youth club in St. Petersburg, and their kids who now reportedly attend there are able to use drone simulators, reportedly. Russia is, uh, though across the board, we do see turning to its youngest. There's been recruiting efforts in schools or boys as, fa as it faces mounting losses on the battlefield. And Melissa Bell is out front tonight. Wagner fighters at an industrial plant inside Bakhmut. They are making very gradual advances, but at huge cost. This soldier says Ukrainian forces have vast amounts of ammunition and are heavily shelling the area. We can't even raise our heads, he says. Wagner has been trying to take Bakhmut for two months and may now be running short of fighters. Its boss, Yevgeny Prigozhin, has lashed out at the Russian Defense Ministry for starving his men of ammunition. We need the military to shield the approaches. If they manage to do so, everything will be okay. If not, then Wagner will be encircled together with the Ukrainians inside Bakhmut. In his latest social media post, Prigozhin praised honest Russian soldiers but claimed, quote, Unprofessional scoundrels and intriguers crushed these modest guys and began to push them around and humiliate them. Yet another jibe at the military hierarchy in Moscow. Prigozhin has accused the Defense Ministry of incompetence and corruption and compared his own almost continuous presence in Bakhmut to the notable absence of Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu. But now Evgeny Prigozhin, once a Kremlin ally and nicknamed Putin's chef, is a man under pressure. He recruited tens of thousands of men from Russian prisons, but they've endured horrendous losses, as many as 80% in some units. He's dredging Russian sports clubs for recruits, and his more experienced units are stretched as they try to encircle Bakhmut. Western analysts think that Prigozhin has fallen into a trap laid by Shoigu a trap designed to weaken both Wagner and its boss. Just when Wagner most needs the support of the Russian military around Bakhmut, it's curiously absent. Russia's elite piling on the gruff, outspoken oligarch. Commentator Alexei Mukin accused Prigozhin of political ambitions and said he was an incompetent commander, adding, he has exposed the Wagner fighters to a major risk of encirclement from the expected counterattack. The Kremlin has long tolerated Prigozhin as Vladimir Putin's licensed disruptor. But if Wagner is decimated in an unsuccessful bid to take Bakhmut, he might find himself out in the cold. For now, Aaron, the battle for Bakhmut continues. The Ukrainians saying it's too early to draw conclusions one way or the other in this ongoing battle. What's also unclear at this stage is what happens with the battle within the battle and whether Evgeny Prigozhin can come out unscathed. Aaron. Melissa, thank you very much from Ukraine tonight. And out front now, Major General James Spider Marks. And General, can Putin afford, right, to let the Wagner Group totally fail? Well, no, he can't. He doesn't want them to fail. I 
I tell you, Melissa's uh, report was really phenomenal. The levels of detail and the analysis and the relationships and the internecine fighting that ostensibly takes place within Putin's hierarchy. It, it's it's not frightening. It's to be expected, I guess. But it really is a game, game of Thrones kind of environment. No, Putin can't afford to lose the Wagner group. Um, and I, and I would tell you, if he were to lose Prigozhin, somebody else would step step up, they'd be recruited in, and that individual will go about the business of creating a contract force, not unlike the Wagner Group. The money exists, and they're going to go find the recruits, and they're going to pay folks. I mean, they, they've got the money to buy the kit and to buy the individuals. That doesn't mean they have the training. So I think Putin's kind of got himself um, a legitimate problem here, putting too much trust, too much freedom into Prigozhin's hand. Well, you know what's interesting? I spoke to a Ukrainian soldier uh, who's in Bakhmut, and he told me about, you know, something that we, we've heard about, we've seen some video of, but it still sort of stuns to imagine, which is that the Wagner forces just literally run into machine gun fire, and they just run in and die en masse. And here's what he said. I can't believe that uh, people, r real person, can run without uh, afraid to die, without like no motivation, but they see how their fellows falling down and they continue running. Wagner have only oh, only one chance to survive is to take our position, our trenches. That's all. They have no choice to, to return to the position because they will be killed from their fellows. I mean, it is amazing, generous to hear him say it, right? That... You know, he, you know, he sort of, and then I realized the key to their success because they can't turn right. around. They know they're going to die. So their best shot is to right. run into it, machine gun fire. Yeah, there is a distinct difference between the Ukrainian soldier who is fighting for the sovereignty and independence of his nation and the, the Russian conscripted and the contracted Wagner Group individual. The Russian is, I'm sorry, the Ukrainian soldier is going to fight for his buddy. He's fighting for his organization. He's fighting for those on his left and his right. And that individual is more frightened about letting them down than he is potentially dying in combat. The ones that are working for Wagner know that the end state is going to be death of some sort, so they really don't care. They are frightened of dying, but they are more frightened a bullet in the head if they have to return. Um, that's a distinctive difference. You have professional soldiers vis-a-vis -vis these contracted, conscripted killers with no motivation other than the threat from a boss. You know, feckless, horrible leadership that they're, they're going to be in. They're going to end their lives one way or the other. So they have no choice. It's, it's really, stunning. it's really incredible. It really is just incredible to think about it, though. Just for a moment, if you try to, th to think about, to imagine being in that position. Um which in a year ago, none of them could have possibly comprehended. And yet here they are rushing in mass to die.